Okay, so as we continue our discussion about horizontal curves, this, uh, this little, little short video segment we're going to talk about is all the different parts of a horizontal curve, different things that we can calculate along this horizontal curve. And what that means is, is so if you're going along this curve right here, this is your straight, your tangent right here. You now we have something here that we need to calculate. We have something here where you're going to begin that next curve. Here's where the next curve ends as you go around there. You know, so on and so forth. As you take these uh, these simple curves that we're going to be calculating, we need to know how to calculate some of these uh, some of these areas. Okay, so here is your typical diagram that we're going to look at. This gives you all the information you're going to look uh, be be using and be able to use to calculate everything that we have here. All right, so the first thing I want to start with is right here is our PI. PI stands for the point of intersection. It's a point of intersection from what? It's a point of intersection from your back tangent, where you're coming from, to your forward tangent. Now what that happens is it creates right here an angle. And what that angle is is your intersection angle. Okay, so now that we have that talked about, let's go into our next one over here. This is our point of curvature. You can see that it's, you know, from our simple curve, what do we have? We had a tangent, and then we had a curve to another tangent. Okay, so PC stands for point of curvature, then you have PT stands for point of tangency, the point where the curve meets your forward tangent. R, of course, pretty simple. When you have, uh, that's just the radius of your curve. T is your tangent length. So if I get rid of this right here, T is the length from the PC to the PI. That's the length of your tangent. And you can see that's the same length as that you'll find on this side over here. Okay, LC. LC stands for long chord, and all that is is from your point of curvature over to your point of tangency. That's the long chord. If this is your curve right here, LC is your long chord. All right, L. L, when we reference L, so you see L is not really written on here, but L is the distance along the curve from your PC distance going all the way along the curve until you hit your point of tangency. Now that's the whole length of the curve. Uh, generally that's what we're solving for, is trying to figure out what that information is. Okay, now what we have is we have E and M. E stands for the external ordinate. Okay, that's the straight line from the PI to the midpoint on the curve, from here to here. That's E. M is your middle ordinate, that straight line from the chord to the midpoint on the curve. It's from here to the midpoint on the curve right there again. That's your middle ordinate. Okay, and the last thing we can talk about here is uh, we have D. So D we already talked about before. That's the, 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 excuse me, that's the degree of curve. Remember what the degree of curve is. You know, if that goes all the way back down to here, it is... Remember, the angle that is subtended by going, if we're talking in feet, by 100 foot, uh, 100 foot increments. If this was 100 feet right there, D represents then your degree of curve. And what all that helps us to do is we start doing some calculations, start doing some uh, uh, figuring out where we're at. So if we had a certain stationing going along here, along the PC to the PT, along the curve right here, you know, and say you wanted to figure out what, uh, what station this was at certain areas or certain locations, okay? The degree of curve starts to help us to, to figure that out. This right here, point on curve, that's just uh, any random point that we have. Uh, same thing for POT is point on tangency, just any point on the tangent. In this case right here, it shows it to be on the forward tangent. Uh, and again, before we've talked about our intersection angle, which we have right here referenced there, and you can see that uh, this is I over 2, meaning that's half of your uh, half of the angle that's subtended. 
And this is for uh, again, this is for your uh, just your general information. You talk about your uh, your horizontal curves here. And on this slide right here, this also gives everything again your definition for that I just went over and talked about. Okay, now as we deal with the horizontal curves, we have to be able to calculate certain stuff. Uh, we want to be able to calculate the length of the curve. Well, and, uh, there's several ways you can do that. We want to be able to calculate the radius. We want to calculate the tangent, the distance. We want to be able to calculate the long chord as well, the extra ordinate and the middle ordinate. So I'm not going to go through, uh, through each one of these. I'm not going to derive them or anything like that for you, but I'm just going to, I'm going to provide them for you so that you have this information uh, to be able to continue on. Uh, the, the big thing here is about, uh, I'll highlight some key differences here. You have to be able to calculate what the length is. <clears throat> so the first one is um, you calculate the length is um, r times the angle subtended, and that would be i in, uh, in radians. So you can do that and use it that way. Another way to do that is to be able to do this in, uh, in feet if you want to take a 100-foot uh, section, right? That's dealing with what? Our degree of curve, right? Okay, so if you want to be able to use that, you can then take I, I right here, divide that by D, so the angle subtended, divide by your degree of curve, and multiply that by 100, and you get that to be in feet. That comes out with the length. Uh, if you want to not do it in feet, you want to do it in stations, then you can just get rid of the 100 feet and just use I over D. Now, one thing I want to make sure and, uh, and mention here as we talk about some of this, these, uh, these things. So we talk about stations. We talked about before that uh, one full station is 1 plus 0, 0. Okay, there's several ways we can write a distance along a reference line, along uh, whatever the, our station line that we're talking about. So if we had a distance of 245.27 feet, that's one way to write it. Another, another way to write it could be in station form, 2 plus 45.27, you know, in station notation. Now, the third one is to write into in the decimal stations. So it's also equal to 2.4527 stations. So you have three different ways how you can write this and how you can read this. Okay, so when I'm talking stations, this is how we're going to write it. That's how we can reference it and use that information. All right, now one thing I want to keep track of, okay, is we have what's known as a, okay, we talked about what the PT is. PT is your point of tangency. Now there's two different types of point of tangencies that we can talk about. Okay, the PT, well, I want to just call it PT, PT back. Okay, that's the stationing along a curve. So if you started here at the point of curvature and you went along here and you stopped, all right, here's 1 plus 0, 0. Kept going along here, 2 plus 0, 0. Keep going along, whatever. As the stationing goes all the way until it reaches the end over here at the point of tangency. Then at that point right there, this point of tangency is considered the PT back because it goes back along the curve. Now what we also have is what's considered to be the PT ahead, your point of tangency ahead. What that means is that's the station distance if you just went along the tangents. Started at the PC, went up to the PI, go all the way down to the PT. So again, if this was 1 plus 0, 0, 2 plus 0, 0, 3 plus 0, 0, all the way on down. So you'll see that the both PTs are different. They're uh, you'll end up with a different station if you're going to calculate them that way. Now, if I ever just write PT, if all you ever see is uh, from PC to the PT, I am always referencing the PT back along the curve. I will make sure and be specific that if I'm ever referencing the PT ahead, I will say PT ahead. All right, let's give you an example here, something that you can calculate. So assume that you have the intersection angle. Um, eight degrees of, of eight degrees twenty four minutes. Uh, the station then of the the PI is sixty four plus twenty seven point four six. The radius of the curve is given here as well. So what I want you to do is be able to calculate. I want to calculate the station at the PC, and I want to get also the stationing at the PT. And again, since I didn't write ahead, I mean the uh, PT back, which means along the length of the curve. And I also want you to calculate the external and the middle ordinate distances. 
All right, so the first thing we can do is we can take this and take L and calculate that. That's, uh, that's the main thing we need to figure out first before we can calculate any, um, any sort of stationing going along here. Okay, given the radius, which we have, and then I, which we have, I needs to be converted into radians. So you just follow straight along, you know, just as is. And you come up now with the distance of that curve is 420 feet. Or you can also write that as um, 4.2000 stations going along there. Total stations. Remember, a full station is 100 feet. Okay, so 4.2000 stations of 100 feet. So 4.2 of 100 feet, giving you the 420 total feet. All right, the next thing that we can calculate based on those formulas here is we can calculate a tangent distance. So you kind of wonder, okay, well why, why am I even going that way? So say there is your intersection angle. Here's your curve, PC and PT. Remember what we're looking for is this distance right here to here, tangent distance. To be able to do that, what we're using the tangent distance for, if I have a stationing right here at, the, at, our, uh, at our point of intersection, then I need this distance here to be able to calculate back to what the point of curvature is. So there's several steps you have to move through to be able to get to the information you're really wanting. Okay, so when I gave you the formula back for the tangent distance, that's r times the tangent of i over 2, plug in all the information that you have and you come up with 210.38 feet. Or if you're going to write that in stations, again, 2.1038 stations. Okay, so now if we have that, we can calculate what our stationing is. So the PC then is just your PI minus the tangent distance. Right, because the PC is before, so you're going to subtract that off. So all you're doing is taking one station, the PI, and you're going to subtract then the tangent distance to be able to come up with 62 plus 1708. Another way to write that then would have been 64.2746 stations minus 2.1038 stations is equal to the 62.1708 stations. And then you can convert this one back into 62 plus 17.08 if you want the exact station. So there's another way to write that and, and be able to see how to be able to calculate that. Erase this for us here. Okay, now if I want to calculate the PT, the point of tangency. Now remember, I'm not saying point, the point of tangency ahead. I'm leaving no notation, so I mean the point of tangency back meaning the distance from the PC along the curve to the point of tangency. So that's why we have our equation right here, the PC plus the length of the curve. So we calculate the length of the curve at 420 feet. We know what our PC station is. We just calculated that. So then we can add those two together and then end up at 66.3708. Now as we're going to calculate our external and our middle ordinate, Again, it's just entering the, the, uh, the information as, we, as, as it asks for. Take your distance times the tangent of, uh, of i over 4, and you come up with then 7.71 feet. And your middle ordinate, same thing, just plug and chug, basically, as soon as you can figure out and know what information you have. See, to be able to calculate the external middle ordinate, you can have done so without calculating the tangent. So you've got to just start to see what it is you're looking for, and know what things you can calculate based upon the information that is given. So that's how we can calculate different parts of, uh, of this curve. So and by doing so, one thing I want to keep track of is as uh, we talk about this. And so as I define this curve right here, this is what I defined it as. I defined it with a radius, a radius and an I. Okay, that tells you almost all the information you need. PI, this is the reference, and so we can figure out what the stationing is along here. But these two right here is what's defining what a horizontal curve actually is. So I could have given you the radius, or I could have given you the degree of curve. If I give you the degree of curve, then you can go back and calculate what the radius is to be able to start using the rest of these formulas.